Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our next hot topic talks about youth empowerment and the skills development in the digital economy. The U.S. Consulate General Will Stevens emphasized the importance of education and skill development for Nigerian youths to succeed in the 21st century economy. He highlighted the impact of digital revolution on job creation and the need for youths to adapt to new skill sets to remain competitive. Stevens noted Nigeria's youthful population is a, as a key asset for shaping the future of work both in Africa and globally, urging the focus on innovation and hard work. Now joining us to discuss this is Dr. Ekemini Udo, CPM, as a lead strat strategist, Skillport Multinational. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we're talking about skill development. What does that even mean, and why is it crucial um, in our economy right now, especially for the youth? Because the Consular General of the U.S., you know, came and had a speech about it. But why is it crucial right now, and what does that word mean? All right, so, so skills uh, development is actually very crucial in the times we find ourselves, especially in a time where the mindset is telling everybody you have to jack by. There are better opportunities out there. You know, we get to find a, a brain drain, a skill drain. Mm. And for us as a country to remain productive, it's important that all these skill gaps are being filled. It's important that we get to have young people who are up to date with, of course, digital skills, with the revolution that is happening already. Most of the curriculums we had, as that when we're growing up, most of those curricula, the country continue to be will continue to be in the reverse. So what we want to do, what we want to see is that the government, that the people prioritize skill development. Because if you look at the population of Nigeria, over 70% of Nigeria's population happens to be young people. Mm -hmm. So if these young persons now are being distracted to get to embrace some other illegal forms of wealth creation, then that means we are in for some deep trouble. So skills development should be a priority. For a company who wants to advance, for a company who is trying to, you know, improve their economy, and of course, there's no better time than now. Mm. So, what are some major challenges you can say that young people have faced so far? Because you talked about, you know, opportunities. I know that having jobs here is not just the best. We don't really have a thriving economy. A lot of people, it, it seems like there's a push factor. So, people are being pushed out from Nigeria. And, of course, these other countries like the U.S., Canada, the U.K. are pulling them in because it seems as though there are better opportunities there. But in Nigeria right now, what are some challenges? that you've seen so far that has just been difficult for youths in particular and how do you think that the government can help better with this because technology is like in fact it's here it's the new thing and it's here and people need to harness it better how do you think the government can do that um, helping the youths ensure that they have this skill development in Nigeria Okay, for me, like a man once said, that one of the most important things the government has to do is to create an enabling environment mm -hmm. for individuals and businesses to try. So looking at the digital economy, there are a lot of young people who are ready to learn something and be able to work in the digital space. But you see, there are certain challenges that need to be looked out for. One of it, first of all, is the skill gap. All right? Mm -hmm. It's a skill gap. Like I said earlier, most of the curriculum we operate with now needs to be updated. Secondly, for those who already have the skills, let's say you are into data analysis, let's say you're into project management, let's say you are trying to be a customer service executive, you have an option. You have an option to work as a freelancer. You have options to take up remote jobs. But if you are taking up remote jobs, power and data is something you need. Because I was on a call sometime in Lagos. I was to be in a training. And then I had young people talk about their challenges. You know, they've lost some remote jobs they had. They had these jobs that they work from home because of network challenges. So you see, the employer will tell them your network is not very fast. And because of that, we have to let you go. Oh. So that means it's not just about the skill now. It's also about the enabling environment. So mm. if these young persons have done their part to acquire skills, have done their part to ensure that they are in line with where, you know, the global economy is going, there are certain infrastructures that, if in place, will help them. So like I said, we want to look at power as something that needs to be tackled. We want to look at 
infrastructure, data infrastructure, and of course, I mean the networks. We need networks that are stable. And maybe we need to have the regulators look more into these sectors and ensure that Nigerians get value for their money. Mm. Okay, so I mean, this question also relates to me right now. What are some skills you would say are in demand right now for young people? And how can they acquire them? Because multiple streams of income is important. In fact, it's crucial with what our economy is saying right now in Nigeria. And you have to have, you know, you have to have the best skills. You have to have something that gives you an edge. You have to be able to bring value to the table. And if it means, you know, learning more skills that should work for you, what are some in-demand skills you can say people really should have right now that would just take them to the next level? Okay, for me, I'll say number one is sales and marketing. Mm. Research has shown that marketing is almost the highest paying skill in the world. But you see, unfortunately, young persons want to find the easy way out. And I mm. tell them this. Let's say you have the skill. Let's say you have the product. Let's say you have the service. That is just the start. Mm. But when you begin to sell this skill to be paid, that is now the art. So mm. first thing you want to do, you want to learn everything you can about sales and marketing, whether it's digital marketing, whether it's affiliate marketing, whether it's a CPA, you just want to learn and have an idea of how to sell, how to sell what you have, how to sell the talents you already have, how to sell the skills you already have. Second, the world is now dependent on data. Everything now is about data. People want to make data-informed decisions. So you might also want to acquire skills around the data space. It could be data analysis. It could be business analysis. You, you just want to have something around data and marketing. For me, that would be my top two picks. And there are so many others. People talk about project management. Project management can also be very interesting. You know, so that would be my, my suggestions. Marketing and sales, anything around data, and of course, managing people. Okay, so I love that. I, I think these are like practical things people can take from this. So if you're watching, we've, we've just listed out some things that we think are the in, in thing right now for you to say, yes, I want to run with this and just have that skill that could help your life and help you to um, flourish as a person. So my next question I was going to ask is basically digital entrepreneurship, because we're talking about youth empowerment. What role do you think the digital, um, the digital world like technology plays when it comes to youth empowerment for Nigerians right now and not just even in Nigeria globally um, how can you make yourself have that edge in the world um, in even in other countries because you spoke about remote remote jobs people are doing remote jobs from here they're making good money how can you put yourself set yourself on that map that you can start to say yes I'm using this um, digital entrepreneurship to empower myself and not just even myself to empower people around me okay for me the concept of digital entrepreneurship is quite is quite broad it's quite mm. broad so i was saying you see what happened now is a practical example of what i said earlier so imagine i was on a live interview for you know an employer out there and the mm. person is trying to give me an interview to say work with me and then network you know network throws me out of the meeting that's already a red flag yes that's part of what we're talking about I so but like you asked the question about digital entrepreneurship i was saying that it's an enabler it allows you to stay where you are and reach out to a larger market. But this is what I want to tell young people. You see, the YouTube, the Instagram, the, the Fiverr, they are different platforms. Mm. People always say, I don't have money. That's why I'm not learning something. You can start digital entrepreneurship from YouTube. Yeah. I always tell people, don't go and just wake up. A lot of persons are beginning to take advantage of young people. You see, people are just selling courses everywhere. I tell people, before you buy a course, you should already have the foundational knowledge. And those foundational uh, uh, information you need are on YouTube. Most of them are free. Mm. So you say, oh, from after this uh, um, session, I think I want to learn something about sales. Go on YouTube, type sales and marketing. Go on YouTube, type how to become a data analyst. Go on YouTube and, and type how to start project management career. These things will come up because one of the things I've discovered as a challenge for young people who want to embrace digital entrepreneurship is they don't really know what they want, all right? They don't mm. know what they want. For example, if you are fluent with speaking, you like to talk, you can be on phone for two days without being tired. You should just go for customer service experience and call center, mm. all right? 
If you are the person that you love to sit indoors, you don't like going anywhere, you might want to take data analysis because your, your, your personality fits into that. But we see a lot of young persons get it wrong because somebody comes online and tells you how much money he made from this thing mm. and the, the, the qualities that it, 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 it takes, what it requires. You're not that kind of person. You're not the person that can sit down for one hour. You're not the person that can sit down for 30 minutes. Mm. All right? So this is, this is a topic that we might need to talk about over and over again. But as a take back, anybody can embrace digital entrepreneurship from wherever you are. Mm. As far as you have data, as far as you have a mobile device, which I'm sure that for you to even watch this, uh, this session, you have a, a, a digital device, mm. you can start. The question is, what are the things that you like to do? Mm. Like I said earlier, if, you, if you're fluent, you like to express yourself, there's something you can do. Mm. If you're the person that you are an administrative person, you have what you can do. If you're an accountant, you might want to be a data analyst. So there is so much for everybody to do. Mm. And I tell you this, with the right mentorship, with the right research and sacrificing time to study, everybody deserves to be a digital entrepreneur. That is amazing. And I think that's such a good way to land it here. Thank you so much. And you know, when you were speaking about, you know, your personality, what you can do, if you like to speak on the phone, you should probably be in customer service. It just reminds me of, you know, um, when you're going into a next class and you have your guidance and counselor, you know, speak to you and then they kind of fit you where you should be or where they think you would thrive better. And I think that's what people need to start doing. Take that in-depth analysis of yourself and say, what do I really enjoy doing? What, what am I passionate about? And then you start to learn the skills so that you can apply that to your life and become a digital entrepreneur. And also, we hope that, you know, the policy makers as well would try as much as possible to make policies that would support the next generation, the youth, um, when it comes to um, the digital economy, when it comes to entrepreneurship, when it just comes to youth empowerment in general. But yes, this is where we have to wrap it up now. Dr. Kemini, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It was a privilege you know and a pleasure just discussing with you and having all of these tips thank you so much thank you so much for having me yes have an amazing day all right, you too, you too. we'll Thanks. be speaking with Dr. Ekemini Udo, CPM, is a lead strategist, Skillport Multinational, and we've just been talking about youth empowerment and the, the crucial or the impact of digital development when it comes to the youth and when it comes to our skills. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. It's been a pleasure. My name is Brume Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday and have a great weekend. Good morning.